we'll go ahead and get started. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Brandon Cook, uh, and I work as the, one of the senior medical respite managers at the National Healthcare for the Homeless Council and the National Institute for Medical Respite Care. What I'm speaking to you all today as the chair of the Greenville Homeless uh, Alliance Steering Committee. Uh, I would like to thank our elected officials who are present with us. Please raise your hand. That's, okay, there we go. Thank you guys for being here. Appreciate you all. Um, I would also like to recognize the members of the GHA Steering Committee who are present. Please raise your hand. I saw a couple of you. Don't hide. Don't hide. Thank you all for being here. Uh, and also, thank you for your commitment to GHA's mission, which is to strengthen and broaden support in an effort to increase options for individuals or families who are experiencing homelessness in Greenville County. Thank you. Also, would like to thank Premier Arts Collective. Sorry, the wind is getting my paper, y'all. Uh, the <laughs> Premier Arts Collective for connecting us to uh, this fantastic artist, uh, Nick Burns, AKA Ninja Picasso, and, and for their continued support throughout this project. Uh, once Nick was on board uh, and trying and gifted this very special and important space, GHA reached out to Tracy Ramser with the City of Greenville Department of Parks, Recreation, and Tourism. Uh, so thank you to Tracy for assisting GHA through the approval process with the Arts and Public Places Commission. Uh, I would also like to, if I can get the staff of Triune to raise their hands. Woo! Yeah, yeah. We really want to thank the staff uh, for going above and beyond with the support of the creation of this mural. Uh, would like to give a special spotlight uh, to Don Austin, the facilities manager with Triune, who at one point uh, even brought Nick a cheeseburger while he was diligently working on the mural. You got to keep up your strength, right? Um, we also want to thank the board of directors uh, for Triune with a special thanks to board member Steve Daniel, uh, who helped oversee the many aspects of burying the electrical and other lines uh, that at one point really threatened uh, to put a halt to the completion of the mural. Um, we also want to thank Clint Link, who connected GHA to Nancy Sue in the engineering services department with the city, who also helped to keep this project on track. I uh, want to thank a uh, special thank you to Kevin Mihaly, photographer and member of the GHA Educate Working Group. Uh, his photographs from the Stories of Hope provided the necessary inspiration for Nick uh, during his artistic process. And uh, we also want to give a thank you to Eddie Bennett and Bennett Equipment and Supply, whose company generously provided, at no cost, the boom lift Nick used while working on the mural. We certainly want to thank our generous donors who gave at the $5,000 level in support of this project. So thank you, uh, Stephen and Jody with McNaughton and McKay Electric. Thank you, Russin and Su Russell and Susan Stahl. And thank you, Steve and Linda with the Spinks Family Foundation. Uh, we also, uh, to that, want to thank uh, the over 50 individuals, families, and organizations who all donated in support of this beautiful mural you all see behind me. And before I hand it off, like I was supposed to, uh, I, just want, I just want to give a very quick personal thank you um, to the folks in the mural who shared their stories and shared themselves so that we could see them, so we could hear them, and so we could see their value to us in our community. So I, I very quickly want to thank Jessica, I want to thank Vernell, Dwayne, Dan, Don, Christopher, Robert, and LaTanya. Thank you all. Woo. Can you bring Jennifer up next? Oh, Jennifer. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And with that, I will pass it over to Jennifer. Thank you. Welcome again. We are glad that you're gathered here in this windy day. We're glad it's not raining. Uh, we, we, this is so good because we're sandwiched in between two rainy days. So we, we give thanks to the Lord above for that. So we, what a privilege and honor it is to host this community mural. Um, because 
I said this recently on a podcast that um, despite what people think about this mural, it causes conversation. It stirs the soul. It causes curiosity to bubble up. And my hope and prayer is that not only these eight individuals who had the courage to share their stories of hope, will that inspire people who are currently experiencing homelessness, addiction, all the things that weigh people down, but also people who have negative images of people who experience homelessness. That is my hope and prayer that this mural um, in the vibrant colors that Nick displayed it will be vibrant colors for conversation in our community. It will be a true connector for not only, it will be a bridge, a connector for those who are experiencing homelessness to those who don't even know what that is, um, that we can put a face and a name. So I'm grateful to Greenville Homeless Alliance and to all of our partners represented in this mural and those who aren't represented in this mural, we thank you. Uh, and I hope that you'll come by many times and bring friends with you and take some selfies and photo ops uh, in front of this beautiful mural. Now I'm going to turn it over to Russell Stahl. This is kind of like old home week. Uh, <laughs> it, it's it's so much fun to be back with old friends. And this journey started with us uh, a while back. And uh, it's, it's really exciting to see the culmination of a lot of planning, a lot of sweat, uh, a lot of energy that has gone into solving the problem of homelessness in this community. We, we are a very special place. Uh, Greenville, I'm biased. But Greenville is a very special place with very special people. And we do things a little bit differently here. Uh, this mural is really important for Susan and me, uh, both personally and, um, and but by the way, it is so hard to follow your pastor when you're giving a talk. <laughs> uh, but this is in the city I love so dearly. Uh, it's on the wall of a church where Susan and I worship and we love dearly and love her people. And it honors an issue and people that we deeply care about. Uh, Greenville is a city of optimism and compassion. Uh, I don't know if you saw, but we, we were voted the number one most optimistic city in the country recently. I don't think, I don't know if we thought we were going to get that. Uh, but, but I believe uh, very strongly that the measure of a city's success is its compassion. The measure of how well a city performs is how well we treat and how well we help those that are most hurting and in the most pain. Uh, I, many of you have probably heard the quote that mama's only as happy as unhappiest child. Uh, we do a very good job, I believe, as a community in helping the unhappiest children. So mama is pretty happy right now. Um, but as the artist will tell you, this is much more than just a pretty piece of artwork on a wall. Uh, it's, as Nick would say, it's not just a painting, which is the way he signs his, his pieces. It's a statement that everyone in the community should be seen and known, heard and valued. Inside the walls of this church, uh, those experiencing homelessness are seen. As I walked up, I noticed the quote on the wall, I want to be known more than I want to be noticed. That, to me, sums up what this mural is all about. Uh, this is a statement that Greenville is a champion of hearing the voices of those who are often unheard. I look back nine years ago, and when we were writing the homelessness white paper, uh, this was back in reaction to the tent city that was under the Pete Hollis Bridge. Uh, this mural is a statement of how far we truly have come in a decade. Uh, however, it's also a reminder of how far we have to go and how much work we need to do. 
Um, I now have the pleasure of introducing the artist responsible for, for creating this magnificent piece of art. Uh, Nick Burns, a.k.a. Ninja Picasso, is a Greenville native, which I love, uh, inspired by the raw soul of street art and the refinement of the Renaissance. He uses the tag NJAP, not just a painting, because he believes there's a story to be told in all his work. Take some time to learn this story and learn the, learn the stories of the people. Greenville is shaped by the stories that we collect. The history of Greenville is shaped by the stories that we tell. Let's use this as an opportunity to continue to tell the story of how we love and care about our community. Nick. Woo! How's everybody doing today? Yeah. <laughs> so I had to be out here um, countless hours, days, different weather, and um, I'd be out here to sort of imagine like what would this type of piece convey to you guys. And just seeing everybody out here today is just that's that's an honor for me first and foremost. And um, I know seeing like faces really big in Greenville is, is um, not that common, um, but their testimonies were very, very powerful. And um, sometimes it's, it's important to just take the time, take the time to just like go beyond what you just see in people and really just like, I guess the best way I can explain it is like values. As an artist, um, values are like different shades of a color. So if you notice at the top, I have like different shades of blue and yellows and purples and pinks around. And that's literally how we all are right now. If you look next to you, uh, there's somebody that has just a little bit more faint of a color than you. It might be a little darker, might be a little lighter, but we all are colors. And the interesting thing about value is that when the light hits it, it can change. There's uh, different parts of a day where if you come out here and you just look at the mirror, it will hit you differently because of the values. So if you see this online, you might have saw it. Uh, you might saw a version of it where it's like it, it fills you with love and hope. Whereas if you come at night, you might you might feel a different vibe, as well as the the, the sky being the same exact tone as the blue. It just erases almost half of the building and just blends in with it. Um, these things are very hard to communicate, which is why, like, I try to in my art create these types of these types of pieces. Um, I don't feel like I'm qualified a lot. I'm just going to be honest. I started off as a dance teacher. I, I was out in downtown Greenville street performing with whoever was crazy enough to be out there with me. Um, <laughs> And I, I did that for years. I would drive up and down this road to go uh, to recitals uh, with my studio. I would see the people sitting out here and I, I, I didn't know like what I could do to help. I just felt like money was never gonna be enough. I, don't, I, could, I didn't really imagine like a dance crew coming. <laughs> <laughs> so I just, yeah, it just, it's always just been on my heart and I never knew like what it was. And I'm just thankful that Premier Arts got me connected with the Greenville Homeless Alliance and Susan. And, you know, they told me about their story and it was just sort of like, whoa, you know, and then I saw the pictures of the location and um, another, whoa, <laughs> you know, it's, it's right here. Um, but um, I was not as brave as I might have seen when I was out here the last time speaking to you guys. Um, I was not, you know, doing doing this type of work, you kind of have to have the heart to just say, I'm going to do it. You know, you don't have time to worry about what you got on. You don't have time to worry about who looking at you. You just got to come out and show up and do it. And that's pretty much how it's been. And um, 
you know, he, I forgot who I spoke to, but she was like, uh, you know, I'm gonna pray for you because you, you know, that, that's scary, <laughs> you know? And I'm over here trying to be tough, like, you know? Um, but then like actually working on the, the job, there were many nights where like, I, I was crushed with this unimaginable fear of failure where all my plans, all my, my drawings, all of the stuff I had planned out just wasn't making sense. And in some cases I would be up in that lift going super high and suspended. My body's not used to it, right? So I'm up here shaking uncontrollably, not knowing what I can, what can help. And you know, I brought this Bible. If you can see, I still got the paint on it. <laughs> still there. I, I carried this with me every time I went on that lift. And I would just get on my knee. Because I'm 6'3". In that cage, you know, I got a little room. But I would get on, I would get here and just, just get on one knee and hold that Bible and just pray to ask God to give me strength. Sometimes it would be 20, 30 minutes. Or an hour sometimes. And then I would just rise and, and, and get to work. So um, I just want to leave y'all with that, and um, I hope you guys enjoy this piece for years to come. And um, it was it was an honor. I just want to first and foremost say thank thank you to God, because uh, this would not have been possible without Him. Um, just just being a hundred percent with y'all. <laughs> um, thank you. director with Greater Greenville Mental Health and a key to these stories of hope featured in this mural are the frontline staff who developed a relationship with Don, Chris, Grinnell, Latanya, Robert, Dwayne, Dan, and Jessica. These relationships opened doors and connected them with resources that helped them transform their situations. I am proud to welcome and introduce to some my colleague, Mary Kay Campbell, who has spent more than 20 years as a frontline clinician at Greater Greenville Mental Health, serving persons with serious and persistent mental illness experiencing homelessness. Mary Kay, during this time, built many relationships with great partners over the years to help the population we serve by providing a commitment to end homelessness. In addition to her compassionate work at Greenville Mental Health, she's also served on Greenville Homeless Alliance Steering Committee since its formation, taking on leadership roles in advocacy and was the vice chair from 2021 to 2023. It is only fitting that on a day when we are celebrating this mural, which lifts up the importance of relationships and hope, that we recognize you, Mary Kay, with this Bridge Builder Award for all the work that you have done throughout the years, bridging the gaps of homelessness and mental illness. So I wanna welcome you up, Mary Kay, and she's getting the Bridge Award for a lifetime of service opportunity as such to stand before my colleagues and with my colleagues, I like to remind all that no one person, no one agency can address this complex social economic problem called homelessness. It takes a village, a community, to address the many needs and to confront the systemic barriers that keep our folks from moving off the street. Uh, I'll pull from clergy coaching that I from time Jennifer 
Pastor Jennifer will post on Facebook. It's within February. In February. Be the reason someone feels welcome, seen, heard, valued, loved, and supported. I think the Greenville Homeless Alliance continues to be the reason for our folks as well as our community. It's been a privilege and an honor to be a part of the beginnings of the forming of Greenville Homeless Alliance from the get-go. I am grateful to many of, of the folks that invited me to the table. We started with the grain of a hope. My colleagues and friends, we got fields of hope. Fields. Going forward and as a collective, we must take care of the fields. Learn from each other. Walk with each other. As we continue to plant seeds and build bridges and journey to educate, advocate, create, and collaborate on behalf of our folks. In times as this, the least of these in our community. Thank you so much. Again, I'm honored. I'm honored. Hello. Hi. Um, my name is Jessica. I would like to take this opportunity to express how grateful I am to God, my children. United Ministries, the Greenville Homeless Alliance, and my family and friends. <laughs> Try not to get emotional. I'm already starting. <laughs> Sorry. Um, anyways, for their unconditional love and support. Uh, here we go. <laughs> During one of the most difficult times of my life. In 2020, I came to United Ministries for emergency shelter. I was scared, uncertain, embarrassed, and most of all, very unsure of what my next step was. Through their program, I gained stability. Oh, I'm such an emotional person. <laughs> Anyways, um, I gained stability, which led to reuniting with all, all of my children, all four of my children. I regained custody of all four. <laughs> Doors started opening. Um, once I was set up with the specific resources that I needed, I was able to gain self-sufficiency. <laughs> I finally was able to take care of my family as a single mother. There are many positive things that I could say, you know, just about United Ministries. That's the organization that, that I went to help for. Um, and I'm beyond grateful that I was asked to be part of the mural. Uh, so w when I look at this mural, I see hope. And I hope you all, you know, I hope anyone passing by <laughs> is curious to know what is the story behind the mural. Um, and I'm like, I'm just honored. Thank y'all. <laughs> oh, what a happy day this is. Thank you all so much for being here. Thank you, Jessica. We try to get Jessica to speak several times and children being sick and her, she had the flu and things like that. So we're so grateful you can be here today. I'm Susan McClarty, if I haven't met you, and I have the honor of serving as the director of the Greenville Homeless Alliance. And I'm just blown away by what we've already heard today. So with these minutes we have left, 
um, I'm going to begin to move us towards our ribbon cutting. And as we do that today, uh, I just want to share, when I see this artwork, I see these beautiful connected faces. And I know their stories now more deeply and how they have touched me personally. I've heard from many of you as well how they've touched you and I hope that that continues as we've seen to grow those fields and plant more seeds. When we connect with art, we are ultimately connecting with our inner self. And art can enable us to look within, listen to ourselves and realize who we are and what we care about. So I'm so grateful that all of you are here today as caring people of our community. Art can connect us to our thoughts and our feelings, our perceptions, and we hope break down some stigmas and bring more people into these experiences. Last May when we stood here, we celebrated our fifth birthday and we announced this mural. And I was uh, asking you all this question. I'm going to ask it again today. Can I contact you? and have a conversation to keep the hope alive. Raise your yes. hand. <laughs> yes. The Greenville Homeless Alliance is not only here to continue this legacy that we stepped into, but to inspire our community through the lives that have been restored. This mural is a celebration, a statement of who Greenville is, who we are, and who we all aspire to be. So join me in a round of applause if you believe that Nick Burns, aka Ninja Picasso, created an amazing piece of public art that will keep the hope alive. All right, I'm gonna check my watch. So a few more things I'm gonna call. Y'all see these green paintings up here? I'm gonna start calling people forward. So when we also had a lot of fun at the block party in July, um, many of you got to experience, like raise your hand if you were part of just putting, starting to put the paint on this building. And that was really fun. And Nick made it so empowering. So I know Matt Johnson is here today who serves on our steering committee and he painted a meme of Kilroy was here. <laughs> hey, didn't you paint that? <laughs> it had your initials beside it. <laughs> Kia Keaton, who's here and serves as secretary. I saw Kia, so there's Kia. She painted a heart. But there was one man who was sitting that day in some chairs, and I don't know his name, but he was here at Triune with his friends for some of the services they so faithfully provide nearly every day of the week. And we kept saying, come up and paint. We're putting this party together for you. And he said, no, no, I'm afraid I'm going to mess it up. And we said, no, it's, it's going to put a layer on there and add to this story. So finally, I don't know what convinced him, but he came up and he was suddenly smiling. And he said, this is amazing. I feel free. His words echo the core purpose of our work and of this mural that we hope continues to strengthen our community, building on decades of work from partners. I'm looking at Ryan Dirk, Miracle Hill Ministries, Trying Mercy Center, United Ministries, Share. I have to give a shout out to my friend Bruce, who said we've got to have a family, and so we're grateful that Jessica shared some of her children in the mural with us. Salvation Army, United Way, United Housing Connections, and many more frontline vital partners that you'll find when you dive into these stories. You are essential on that front line. Helping us all feel that freedom of being seen, heard, and valued. So again, I challenge you as we begin to have our ribbon cutting, to have those conversations, not just with me, but have them with all of your friends and colleagues as well. It is the conversations that will keep hope alive, keep us connected in relationship, keep us continuing to catalyze around action towards solutions. So thank you. And with that, 
I'm going to begin asking Jennifer if you'll help me. Yeah. We've got Gail PA, and Gail was going to tag someone else. So as we call your name, we also want to um, ask everyone that was in the mural and those organizations who are walking alongside the stories that have been shared to also representatives to come forward. Looking for, okay, so we have Don Austin, Triune Mercy Center. Woo! I see my friend Dwayne Tucker, come on up. Woo! Dwayne represents New Horizon Family Health Services, and I believe Jason and Brandon are both here. Uh, this is the only place in South Carolina with medical respite beds that help Dwayne overcome uh, heart surgery. So please take time to learn Dwayne's story. We have the Salvation Army crew here. If you'll come forward representing Vernell. Woo! And there we have Lisa here with Jasmine Road. Uh, representing LaTanya, who's at the very top of our mural with the jasmine flower Woo! in her hair. Dan. <laughs> Dan is here, as well as Ryan and Jeremy, representing Miracle Hill. Woo! <laughs> and I know we have Robert. Shell, come on forward, Robert. Woo! I believe we have Elaine Hitch, the Chair of Missions. Yes, there's Elaine. Chair of Missions for Buncombe, Buncombe Methodist Church. And Jessica, of course. We have Jessica, and I believe I saw Lizzie get here. Lizzie Bever of United Ministries. And then I want to ask, uh, I think we have some people here from the city and maybe also Duke Energy, if you'll come forward. I believe Nancy Sue, who helped us get those power lines buried, and Tracy Ramsour, and maybe some folks from Duke. I want to ask Kevin Mahali to come forward. Christopher. Christopher. Oh, Christopher, come on forward. I thought I, and Mary Kay and April, I'm so sorry. Woo! I in this office, I went down the list. Make sure after we cut the ribbon that you all take your green gift up here, everyone in the mural or the organization if you couldn't be here. Um, if you were a donor for the mural, we're gonna ask you just to come forward. We're gonna spread out this nice big red ribbon now. Come on forward and someone has, come on, okay. So start maybe holding everybody, grab onto the ribbon. Somehow we're going to figure this out. And we've asked Nick to do the cutting of the ribbon. <laughs> if you're a part of the steering committee, please come forward as well. Or if you've served on the steering committee in a previous term, I see some of our steering committee folks are coming forward. All right, I'm going to join them for the ribbon cutting, and so I'll, um, afterwards, just please again make sure that you have signed our print that was circulating. Please make sure you take your gift, and we do have refreshments inside and want to encourage you to come on in and enjoy those inside, and we thank Les, uh, who's taking pictures today, and everybody who helped make this possible. Come on, Nick! Woo!